now at 11. Beware of rabid bats. Pet owners are on alert after two dogs grabbed infected bats and had to be put down. Plus, we don't leave any of our brothers behind, so I had to help them. A Milwaukee police officer goes the extra mile for a fellow Marine and ends up helping vets all over the city. And bombarded with group spam texts, the five things to know to get them to stop. Your news starts now. It's just, it's devastating. So many people have lost everything. So first tonight, it's been just over a week now since Hurricane Dorian hit the Bahamas. Portland-based Mercy Corps is now scrambling to get victims there the supplies they need to recover. Thanks for joining us. I'm Dan Haggerty. And I'm Laurel Porter. If you can believe this, another storm is now moving toward the islands. Meteorologist Matt Zafino will give us a look at what's expected from that system. But first, Mike Benner got an update today from a volunteer on the ground in the Bahamas. Mike. And Laurel, first of all, the woman we connected with was extremely grateful we even had the chance to talk. She says the infrastructure down there is a mess and getting any sort of line out is a challenge as far as recovery efforts go. She says it's all about delivering immediate aid to those in need, but also teaching Bahamians how to rebuild themselves. As you can see from the air, the devastation in the Bahamas is nothing short of catastrophic. The entire island was just hit so hard by this storm. Christy Delafield is one of the volunteers from Portland-based Mercy Corps. She's in hard-hit Freeport on Grand Bahama. She says the island was absolutely destroyed by storm surge and flooding. So much water went into these communities. Not to mention unimaginable wind. On Abaco, we saw a boat that was sitting on top of a two-story building. Um, we're seeing houses that just look like a giant stepped on them. They're absolutely crushed. Delafield says aid workers have a lot on their plate. They're distributing emergency relief in the form of canned goods and clean water, even solar lanterns. Because the electrical grid is out, so people don't have light at night, but then also those lanterns have USB ports, so people can charge their phones, contact their loved ones, and get access to emergency services. And boy, are those services needed. Remember, Hurricane Dorian stalled out over the Grand Bahama and Abaco Islands for two days, dumping several feet of water. A lot of people are really worried that they may have lost their jobs because as, as their homes were destroyed, so too was the other infrastructure of the islands. And this is a country that's economy is really dependent on tourism. And sadly, parts of the Bahamas look like the last place anyone wants to vacation. Mercy Corps volunteers pledged to do their best to bring it back. All right, so if you're wondering how you can help, Christy Delafield says the best thing to do is to donate money. We have a link to the Mercy Corps website in the news link section of KGW.com. Laurel. Thank you, Mike. We appreciate what Mercy Corps is doing down there. Let's check in with Chief Meteorologist Matt Safino now for that new threat headed to the Bahamas. Matt, how serious is this? Well, this will be nothing like what Hurricane Dorian was, but few storms are. However, you can see this cluster of thunderstorms now over the southeastern Bahamas, and the Hurricane Hunter airplanes have already flown into this, and they have detected a circulation center. It's somewhat broad and disorganized. The wind's only about 30 miles an hour or so, but still, the last thing they need is any inclement weather in the Bahamas, the Bahamas, especially the northwestern Bahamas that got hit so hard by Dorian, and this is going to track that way. So again, this is being called potential tropical cyclone number nine because it has great potential to become a tropical cyclone, which is another name for a tropical storm. It's just not there yet. It's not even a tropical depression, but we do expect it to form as it moves across the Bahamas and become a tropical storm as it exits the Bahamas as we head towards and through the weekend. So again, uh, this will be problematic in that they're going to get quite a bit of rain from this. Look at Freeport with running about three inches or so from this system. And then Florida as well is going to see quite a bit of rain as that tropical storm moves inland. So again, nowhere near what Hurricane Dorian was, but still bad weather is not good news for the Bahamas right now. Back to you. Uh, not at all, Matt. Thank you so much. We have an alert now from Cowlitz County tonight. Two dogs there had to be euthanized when they came in contact with bats with rabies. Health officials say that their deaths could have been easily prevented. KGW's Catherine Cook has more now from Castle Rock. Yeah, you know you're pretty. Kyle McCoy loves his German Shepherd Aries. The Callitz fire captain even brought him to work today here in Castle Rock. 
a day when folks in town are talking about the untimely deaths of two other dogs. Saw that, you know, they had to put the dogs down. Cowlitz County health officials say the two dogs had to be euthanized after coming in contact with rabid bats. The dog's owner found them each holding a dead bat in their mouths. Health officials say both bats tested positive for rabies, the county's first documented case in 10 years. They say chances of the dogs contracting rabies and dying from it were high. Very sad. I can't imagine what we'd do if, if he got bit and we had to have, have him put down. So, But he's got all of his shots. Health officials say neither of the euthanized dogs had had their rabies shots, a requirement for legal licensing, but not something every pet owner does, especially in rural areas. A lot of barn cats and like, farm dogs, you know, they don't really follow up with their shot records. Bats are pretty common and not just here in Cowlitz County. Also, experts say they're a vital part of our ecosystem. So how can you tell if one is sick or possibly dangerous? Contrary to what we think of from television when we see rabid animals that are, you know, aggressive and things like that, usually rabid animals um, tend to be very dull and very lethargic. Dr. Ladan Mohamed Zadeh is a veterinarian at Dove Lewis. She says this case is a good example of why all pet owners should have their dogs and cats vaccinated for rabies and not just for their health. And there are extreme rare instances where people uh, have survived rabies, but by and large, it is nearly 100% fatal. Back in Cowlitz County, Kyle says he's not afraid of bats. We've actually had a couple show up in our fire station. But he hopes no one else loses a pet because of something they could have prevented. In Castle Rock, Katherine Cook, KGW News. New tonight, a Southeast Portland woman has a warning for fellow runners after she crossed paths with a cougar. It happened early Tuesday morning on Powell Butte. Christina Hayden was running on the trail, approaching the meadow when she saw something bound over the trail right in front of her. She says she runs there with her dog every day and has never seen a cougar before. I've seen the coyotes all the time, so that's why I just thought it was just a coyote. And but when I saw him crossing over, I was like, oh, no. This is a cougar, and uh, sure enough, it was. I mean, he just stood there, and uh, I didn't stick around to make eye contact with him. So we turned around and got out of there. Probably the right thing to do. She says the cougar didn't come toward them at all and went about its business. She actually thought it was pretty cool to see it, but wants others in the area to be cautious. We learned about this story from a viewer tip. If you have a story idea, you can submit it to us on our website. Email us at newstips at kgw.com or just find us on Facebook. In an update for you tonight, the Portland police lieutenant accused of showing bias toward right wing protesters was just doing his job. That's according to the independent police review. The mayor called for that review after the Willamette week obtained some text messages that showed Lieutenant Jeff Nia exchanged friendly text messages with Patriot Prayer organizer Joey Gibson. The messages raised some questions about whether Portland police helped Gibson's group evade arrest during protests. The investigation found Lieutenant Nia did nothing wrong. It was his job as the police bureau's crowd control liaison to communicate with organizers of all backgrounds. The audit did find that Portland police needed to have formal training for crowd control liaisons. It since added that type of training, which was put into use during protests last month. The front running Democrats in the race for the White House faced off in their third debate tonight in Texas. They spent a lot of time taking aim at the president. President Trump, you've spent the last two and a half years full time trying to sow hate and division among us. We have a guy there that is literally running our country like a game show. We must and will defeat Trump, the most dangerous president in the history of this country. There was also plenty of infighting in the debate on ABC News. Our Verify team was busy fact-checking the candidates. You can read their report right now on KGW.com or your KGW app. So hopefully you caught our KGW special Inside Woodlawn just before this newscast. If you missed it, our Kristen Severance and photojournalist Gene Cotton are spending an entire year inside a Portland elementary school. Now their goal here is to document the stories of the staff and the students, both the successes and the challenges. You can watch our first episode right now on the KGW YouTube page and stay with KGW for continuing coverage from this school year all year long. Definitely worth checking out. Coming up here, earthquake proofing soil. The fascinating research being put to the test in Portland today. And a police officer 
turns a routine call into a chance to keep a local veteran from falling through the cracks. Now his efforts are reaching citywide. And what a beautiful day it was with temperatures in the 80s, but the clouds have been moving in since this afternoon. And there has been rain in Oregon already, some of it fairly heavy. We'll break that down and let you know what's on the way this weekend and for Friday. And about two-thirds of it is pretty good.